Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Raspberry Pi OS, also known as Raspbian, in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at some system requirements and what we're going to be using to install this. We're going to be doing this on Windows 10, so you're going to want to have that installed as your operating system. Next, you'll need to have VirtualBox installed on your computer. And if you don't already have that, you can check out this video and I can show you how to do that. You're going to need at least four gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of disk space, and you're also going to need the Raspbian ISO image. And everything that we're going to be doing in this video will be linked in the description below. So with that out of the way, let's get to the installation. So we're going to begin at the desktop like we usually do. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is open up our browser. I'm going to use Google Chrome right now. And inside Google, I'm just going to type in the search field Raspberry Pi and then hit enter. And it's the first thing that's going to come up. Raspberrypi.org is the official URL. Then we can click on software up here at the top. And it's going to give us an option to download some images. So we'll see all the download options. And then we can just scroll down a bit here. They have a few different versions that you can download. We're looking for the Raspberry Pi desktop. This is going to be based on Debian. And this is the ISO file that we want to download. So the file is about 2.9 gigs in size. We're going to let that download. And once it's complete, we'll be able to install it inside VirtualBox. So we'll just jump over to that. So now that it's done, we can go ahead and open up our virtual box. And what we're going to want to do is create a new image. We'll click on the new icon and we have to give it a name. So the name that we're going to give it here is just Raspberry Pi. You can call it whatever you like. Next is going to be the machine folder. And I'm going to be leaving the machine folder as default. But if you want to change that, you can change it to anywhere that you'd like it to be. Next, we're going to have the type and the type that we're going to select is going to be Linux. And below in here, we're going to scroll all the way down to the very bottom and make sure that we select other Linux 64 bit and then click on next. Now for memory, uh, the minimum requirement is two gigs of RAM. So we're going to make sure that we have at least two gigs. Anything more would be great, but two gigs would be the minimum. And then you can click on next. And now we'll be using create a virtual disk. Now click on create. And then we'll be leaving VDI and then click on next. We're going to be using all default options here. So dynamically allocated, we can click on next. And over here, now the SD card that you're usually going to have is going to be about 16 gigs. So you want to have at least 16 gigs as the minimum. And then you can click on create. So that's done. And now all we have to do is just point this virtual machine to the ISO image so it can install. So we'll click on the settings option and then go over to the left hand side and find storage. And then underneath this CD image right here, we're going to click on the empty and then we'll have the disk on the right hand side, select it, choose a disk file. And now we're going to point it to the ISO that we just downloaded, which is right here. So we can select it and then click on open and that's good to go. So we can click on OK. And now we're done configuring it. So we just have to start it up and get installing the operating system. So we'll just click on start and it's going to pop up here. And the first thing it's going to want to do is confirm the ISO that we're going to be using as a, as a startup disk. So we want to make sure it's selected and then click on the start button. So in the menu here, uh, we're going to be using the graphical interface. So we'll click on graphical install and then hit enter on your keyboard. And now we'll have the Debian installation window. So we'll just click on continue. We'll be using a lot of default settings here as it sets up. Uh, unless you have a reason to change it, you can just continue your way through. Uh, I'll just quickly walk you through those steps. Okay, so the first option that we have here is guided use entire disk. This is a virtual machine, so we can leave that as default. And then we're going to be leaving this as well. And then we're going to make sure in here that we're going to be selecting all files in one partition. And then we can click on continue. And now we're ready to finish partitioning and write changes to disk. So we can click on continue and we want to confirm these changes. So we'll say yes, and then click on continue. So as it's copying everything over, I'll just skip over to the next part. So we're being asked if we want to install the grub bootloader to the master boot record. So we can just leave the option as yes, and then click on continue. And then we want to make sure that we're selecting the drive, our virtual drive right here, which is a second option and then click on continue. So now that the installation is complete, we can go ahead and click on continue. And what it's going to want to do is reboot the system. So what I'll do is I'll just skip to the next part. 
And it's just rebooting right now, so we're just gonna let it go through its full sequence, and then we're gonna get a, a couple more configuration steps for the setup wizard. Okay, so Raspberry Pi is just loading up right now, and we get the welcome screen. Uh, just a couple more steps here. It's gonna wanna set up uh, the location that you're in. I'm gonna leave everything as default right now, and then click on next, and then it wants to change the password. So the username by default is gonna be Pi, Raspberry is the default password. I highly recommend you type in your own password. And once you've clicked on next, you can then automatically do an update right now. For the purpose of this install, I'm just gonna skip it. And then we're done the installation. So it's set up complete. You can click on done. And now we're at the Raspberry Pi desktop. So we fully installed the operating system. And if we go over here into the menu, you get all the functionality that you would if you were to install it on a Pi device. Uh, so you can continue, and this is excellent if you want to be testing out different types of configurations or installing different types of software. Uh, it's a really good way of just testing out the Raspberry Pi OS and see if it's something that you're comfortable with before rolling it out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you're interested in more content like this, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.